it's now time to take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe. Nigeria has recorded two new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 46. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, said one is from Lagos, while the other is from Oshun State. Ondo remains the only Southwest state standing with no confirmed case. Meanwhile, Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Oshibajo, some ministers, senior government officials, and top business executives who recently had contact with President Muhammadu Buhari's chief of staff, Malam Abba Kiari, have gone on self-isolation. Their self-isolation followed Kiari's testing positive for COVID-19 after a trip to Germany, where he had talks with officials of Siemens in Munich on improving power supply in Nigeria. This comes just after Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohamed also tested positive to the virus. The governor earlier said he met and shook hands with Mohamed, the son of former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, who tested positive for COVID-19 on Sunday. Well, this just goes to show how, or remind us, how highly communicable this disease is. Referring to the governor of Bauchi State, he couldn't have had more than a handshake and a bit of banter with Mohamed Abubakar, and yet he is you know, he's tested positive, and, and also um, Malam Kiari, who flew to Germany on business and came back. He wasn't obviously, you know, going to nightclubs and what have you at his, at his level and at his age. But even in a business setting, just talking to people, shaking hands with people, it's a constant reminder that really nobody is immune, no matter how old you are, no matter what color your skin is, no matter what state of health that you're in. The only... Um, issue might be whether you'll be mild or critical, but immunity does not exist for anybody. Yes, you are very correct. We are all uh, vulnerable. And what happened yesterday with the chief of staff to the president testing positive and the state governor testing positive uh, probably will drive home to the point, will drive home the point to all those persons who still think that either black people or Nigerians or, you know, they themselves as individuals are immune from coronavirus. The truth has been driven home that, look, we are all at risk. And we are at greater risk in Nigeria because uh, our health facilities, the health infrastructure in this country, is in a complete state of disrepair, if we may say so. I've seen some examples of isolation centers uh, that, uh, you know, are being set up in some parts, in, in some... In, in, some, in some parts of the country, but I will not put my goods in some of those isolation centers. And what is required at this time is leadership. Leadership in terms of moving fast to see how we can provide the necessary infrastructure. We may not, like China, be able to build a hospital in 10 days, but at least there is something that can be done. And the fact that our leaders are now being affected, uh, again, uh, raises a number of issues. These leaders are here with us. We are all in it together. The failure of the Nigerian leadership to provide health infrastructure, you know, has now shown all of us that even when our leaders are sick in certain circumstances, they will also be victims, if I may use that phrase, of the circumstances that they themselves have created by their own negligence. I do not see any governor or any big man in Abuja uh, rushing to Europe. Even in the United Kingdom, they are overstretched. The UK is calling for 250,000 volunteers. They are building new hospitals. They, they are not likely to take anybody coming from Africa who says he's a big man in Africa. So that's one lesson that all of us must uh, learn, that there is no place like home. If you develop your home, then perhaps you are safer. And then in terms of leadership also, I've seen a video being circulated, uh, some ministers, presidential task force, going to the villa, you know, purportedly to go and visit... Uh, to go and visit uh, the chief of staff. I mean, you don't go and visit the chief of staff in the villa. We expect that by now the chief of staff will be in isolation together with, uh, you know, the vice president and others. All the uh, other people that went there, they had had contacts. So when we see our leaders still commingling, wearing a funny mask, one of them was even wearing a mask that had a beak. Look, that's disappointing. They all uh, herded themselves together into one bus possibly spreading coronavirus further. All of them should go into isolation. You know, we should be very serious about this. There is a phrase now that is making the rounds. They call it covidiots. You know, people, you know, who do not want to uh, take necessary precautions. We don't want to continue to see images of Nigerian leaders not taking necessary precautions because they will not only endanger the, 
their own lives. They will endanger the lives of the junior people who work for them, who do not have the resources to take care of themselves. Let them hand over to the palm sex. Everybody who attended the Federal Executive Council meeting uh, uh, last Wednesday, everybody who has had any contact with any of these prominent persons that have tested positive should all go into self-isolation. In fact, Asso Rock itself should be shut down. Everybody in Asso Rock should be made to take coronavirus tests. We, we have to be serious. I don't know whether I sound very harsh, no, but these are the plain not, not even remotely, because as usual, it is a leadership problem. I keep thinking of that Malcolm X quote, how the chickens have come home to roost. Because no matter how much money you have now, you are just not immune. That has always been the case, because even if you're driving, I don't know, Bentley, Rolls Royce or whatever, on many of our expressways, if you get into an accident, you're stuck, same as a person riding an Okada. There is no help for you. This has been glaring for many years, and nothing has been done. And we really hope that this situation really wakes people up. And the leadership problem manifests itself in so many different ways, including the example that you cited. What on earth are they all guessing into a coaster bus? To do what is that in aid of? It's really bad. And we also have the issue with the president, with the governor of Bauchi State and the son of Atiku Abubakar, who reportedly shared a ride in a private jet. Private jet, Okada, however it is you travel, nobody is immune at this point. That is just the bottom line. This is a leveler that we have not seen before. Well, I mean, you know, the other time there was one minister making a funny statement saying any doctor that wants to leave Nigeria can leave. Now we need doctors. Exactly. The doctor-to-patient ratio in Nigeria is uh, very low, right? Look at the United Kingdom that even has capacity. They are looking for doctors. Yeah. They are looking for nurses. If we have, you know, a, an escalation in Nigeria, we will be in a we terribly helpless it. situation. We can't afford it. Did you see the outburst from the mayor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, yeah, talking he says about he's the not shortage of ventilators? moving faster than a bullet train. Yes, and they have no ventilators, and he was visibly upset about the situation. They need, in New York, at least about 30,000 ventilators. Yes. They have just about 300. 400, I think. 400, Imagine. okay. But that they, kind of a shortfall. They will need up to 30,000. Yes. This is it's serious business. So um, just very quickly before we go on a break, let's tell you that Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has given his third press conference in four days on the COVID-19 outbreak in Lagos State with a new set of directives to slow the spread of the virus with consequences for non-compliance. We'll finish this story after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. So The Morning Show, turn on. You yes. were taking a story earlier. So I'll start again with the story on Lagos State, where Governor Babajide Sonwolu has given his third press conference in four days on the COVID-19 outbreak in Lagos State, with a new set of directives to slow the spread of the virus with consequences for non-compliance. APC leader and former Lagos State Governor Bola Ahmed Tinubu also spoke to the media. Arise News correspondent Adifemi Akinsoya reports. In a nutshell, Lagos State Governor Babajide Somwolu has not placed Lagos under a total lockdown. What he has done is issue directives which focus on contact. All markets and stores, all market and stores, except markets that are selling food items, water, medicines, pharmacies, medical equipment, and other related essential life savings products, daily life products, are hereby directed to close, effective from Thursday, 26th March, 2020, for seven days at the first instance. He also said that in the immediate term, the government would not be issuing any type of financial relief fund for people who may be facing any type of economic hardship in this, in this first seven-day period. In life, I mean, things do happen. So you are making a financial loss for a week as against staying alive for the rest of your life. So that's why I'm saying that we're closing them down at first instance for seven days. So meaning that it's not open-ended. It's not something that... We do into perpetuity. We want to be real with ourselves. Seven days will not hurt anyone, even financially. But even for us, you know, we've shut down the civil service, you know, and, and, and we have to do that because it's only when you have a life that you really can also talk about your financial, I mean, um, adequacies and all of it. The 
underlining theme here is again contact cases making sure that the public are well aware of what they can do to keep themselves safe so out of the positive cases we have in lagos um, majority are imported about 20 five of uh, the rest are uh, contacts that we've been tracing and the remaining five are just cases that we have no idea where they acquired the infection so at the moment majority is still uh, imported we're now beginning to see evidence of spread within the community where we don't know where the contact has taken place we have confidence in the team so whatever we do we comply the government also asked, answered a question on making sure the public at large are aware that coronavirus is real it is life-threatening in some cases and Lagosians, indeed Nigerians across the country, have to make sure that they're taking precautions to keep themselves safe. Adefemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Lagos. Well, we observed this yesterday, or it was the other day, about Baba Jidis Nomolo. He's been really proactive. I'm very impressed with the leadership that he's displayed, and it's reassuring. Obviously, we do have a long way to go in terms of equipment. Now that we're at this um, community spread phase, we continue to pray that we don't have some kind of massive escalation, because we clearly cannot handle that. But so far, the Lagos State Government is doing the best that they can with their resources. I am a bit disappointed that he said that there's going to be sort of no financial palliative, but he did say yet. They're going to review this after seven days, the closure of the markets, because a lot of people are going to really be massively disadvantaged. Well, I think what is important is that, you know, he's asking the people of Lagos to make sacrifice. Yeah. That, look, if you close your shop for one week, uh, you will not lose out. You, it's a way of making sacrifice. And I think it's important to underline that in terms of the collective responsibility that we all share. But I think it's also a good thing that foods medicines, you know, basic essentials for the survival of the community will still be available. One, yes, uh, Baba Jiri Sonwolu should be commended. He has been very proactive. But it's nice to also see that other governors are beginning to emulate him and wake up. The governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohamed, willingly submitted himself for testing, and he tested positive. In uh, River State, uh, Wiki, Governor Iyesom Wiki is personally leading the task force in Delta State, we have seen the governor introducing some measures. In Edo State, similarly, in Ekiti State, in Ekiti State uh, the same thing has happened there. So we need more of these governors to be proactive. In, uh, in uh, Boronu State, which is even more or less a war zone, we have seen the governor also uh, making efforts to provide their facilities. But every day we see Sonwulu on television or we hear him on radio. I think the time has come also for the president of Nigeria to come forward. It's past due. Now, the other day when we discussed it, you all said I was protecting the uh, president. But what I was trying to do was to describe the kind of circumstances in which he may have found himself. But now that the uh, presidential villa seems to be under threat, seems to be emerging as an institutional epicenter of coronavirus, I think many Nigerians right now would like to see their president come forward uh, to, ad to address them, to reassure them. And they need to be convinced that, indeed, the president tested negative. So this moment calls for leadership. It calls for confidence. It calls for the president taking over as the uh, commander-in-chief of the anti-coronavirus task force. We're all on the same page at Arise News now. <laughs> so we'll take a brief break, and we'll be joined next by Arise business analyst Rosas Adiri. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is Arise business analyst Rutus Uduri with Business News. Rutus, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Tundu. Good morning, everybody. So um, the MPC meeting was concluded yesterday, and um, yeah, as I said, I thought they were going to hold the rates, and they and they did. Uh, I didn't think uh, that they were going to cut or, or increase them. So as far as the MPC outcome is concerned, all parameters. Uh, were held in place. Uh, the benchmark interest rates remained at 13.5%. Uh, the asymmetric uh, corridor uh, was between, you know, plus 2% on the high end going up, minus uh, plus 200 basis points, minus 500 basis points, meaning that it can't go higher than 15.5 or lower than uh, 85 
and uh, the uh, CRR, cash reserve ratio, that, of course, uh, was to remain at 27.5%, uh, and the liquidity ratio remained at, uh, at 30. So, uh, besides that, I thought that, you know, Governor Mefele, when he was reading the comments from the NPC as far as the outlook of the economy, I thought it was very honest. I mean, he talked about the exchange rate pressure, uh, he talked about the depleting reserves. He talked about how the coronavirus was causing a health crisis and could cause an uh, economic crisis. He talked about the you know, possibility of recession for emerging markets and called on the federal government to assist uh, the central bank in uh, trying to stabilize the economy. So I thought that was, uh, was, was, was pretty honest uh, from him as far as the outcome was concerned. Well, whatever argument uh, you know, that had been in the public domain over the uh Monetary Policy Committee meeting that held for two days has now been settled. Mm. There were economists and financial experts who said the CBM was likely to follow the trend of central banks around, around the world and cut rates. Now, MFLA's position or the MPC's position is that that may be counterproductive. There were persons who said, look, the government cannot or the CBM cannot even afford to change the basic parameters as we have it. Because the fundamentals within the economy, mm. you know, do not favor them, do not favor, you know, any kind of change. One, our external reserves is uh, almost uh, depleted. Uh, two, uh, there is weak aggregate demand within the economy. Uh, three, um, you know, there are other contradictions. The stock yeah, exchange is down, rising, yeah. uh, big sell-off within the economy. Yeah. So what the uh, Monetary Policy Committee has done after its two-day meeting is to take a cautious approach, yes. is to take a wait-and-see approach. I even found a, a, a hint of a religion in it, hope, because the CBN governor was saying, well, they are hoping that, you know, the uh, coronavirus epidemic will not escalate, you know, in Nigeria, that eventually it will reach a plateau. Mm. And so they are taking a cautious approach to see how, you know, uh, it works out mm. and whether oil price will go up and whether... You know, the pandemic will not uh, affect us uh, uh, in a terrible situation, in a terrible manner. And, you know, for that reason, they say they want to see how those six measures, uh, six-point measures that have been introduced uh, previously, uh, tax rebates, uh, moratorium on uh, payment of uh, intervention uh, funds, reduction of rates uh, for the banks that borrowed uh, intervention facilities and all of that. Okay, so it's a cautious approach, but... The good news is that he says they will look at it. If there is need to review it, they will come around to it. Now, he also made a point about what you have said, what the federal government should do, mm. and what should happen within the economy so that there can be some kind of coherence in terms of approach. And yesterday, we were talking about the fiscal side of it. Yes. You know, and I was very glad when the CBI governor talked about a new fiscal regime. Now, we didn't have time yesterday to go into all of that. Yes, certain fiscal measures have been introduced on the fiscal policy side, including, you know, uh, placing a ban on uh, further recruitment, including, you know, austerity measures in government, saying, for example, that there will be no further recruitment, that government expenditure will be rationalized, that the 2020 budget, uh, you know, will be reviewed, and it's been, the benchmark has been reviewed, taken from $57 per barrel, to $30 per barrel. But I think that what is most important is, you know, reducing government expenditure. Mm. We still see government officials going about in convoys. Now, who is foiling those convoys? You know, we still see ostentation, you know, on the part of uh, uh, federal government officials. That has to end, you know, because the government is not making money. But the more important development, I think, yesterday is that even the House of Reps, is considering an economic stimulus package. It may be an imitative thing, mm. but most of their proposals are on the fiscal side. And we hope that they are doing this in concurrence with the executive arm of government. Thank you, Mr.